Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Arms Warrior on the Shadowlands beta. Unfortunately, this spec has gotten a lot of minor changes, but nothing game-changing. So, if you enjoyed how Warrior played in the past, with the slow play style where you would need to kind of pull up your rage um, and then spend it in burst whenever you had Colossus smash up, then you're probably gonna like it in Shadowlands. However, if you enjoy a little bit more faster paced uh, play style, then they haven't made too many changes that would improve that. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my top patrons, Manny and Jesper, as well as everyone else who chose to support me on Patreon. If you'd like to check it out, you can find the link to it in the description box. First up, let's take a look at all the abilities that have been added or changed. Um, Arms Warrior has gotten Spell Reflect back, which is a great addition because Arms of Warrior in particular has struggled with survivability in Mythic Raiding, and that was one of the big drawbacks of bringing an Arms of Warrior, so adding this will help it out in a lot of situations in Mythic Raiding. And then we also get Shattering Throwback, which probably won't see as much use in PvE, but it's quite a nice addition for PvP in particular. And another addition to our defensive toolkit is Ignore Pain. Um, there will be niche situations particularly in Mythic Raiding where you might use it, um, or in Mythic Plus. But overall, I think it just costs too much rage for the benefit, and especially with Spell Reflection being added back, um, I don't think it's going to see too much use. And then for Mobility, as well as a Defensive, we got Intervene back to help out with um, moving around a little bit, and it's also pretty good in PvP in particular. And then two abilities have been added from the prot toolkit, that is shield block and shield slam. Um, I think currently they're both not worth using. Uh, shield block again might see some use in PvP. So as you can see, a lot of these abilities that have been added back are probably not going to be too useful in PvE, but they might have their spot in arenas. A pretty significant change to Arms Warrior has been the change to our mastery. So deep wounds now applies a bleed as well as causing the target with the bleed to take increased damage based on your mastery. So it works very similarly to uh, Colossus Smash, for example. Um, this makes our mastery a little bit more interactive and in order to keep up. Also, a kind of minor change is that Execute doesn't apply our mastery anymore, as far as I'm aware. So it means that in Execute range, sub 20%, we're back to putting a larger emphasis on Mortal Strike. And another pretty nice change was to Die by the Sword, whose cooldown was reduced from 3 minutes down to 2 minutes, again just further uh, improving our survivability. Alright, next let's take a look at the talents. There have been quite a few small tweaks in this area, uh, but nothing really that changes how we play. So Impending Victory has been buffed up to 30%, so especially on bosses where you're just kind of standing still the entire time and you don't make use of double time, it's definitely going to be a much more sought after talent. Then, then in our AoE row, then in our level 40 row, collateral damage has been changed. So now whenever Sweeping Strike ends, your next Whirlwind will deal extra damage based on each ability that you pressed within your sweeping strike that dealt damage to an extra target. So overall, at the end of your sweeping strike, you're just going to whirlwind and it's going to do a ton more damage. Um, cleave has also been changed to now replace sweeping strikes, but it will also consume your overpower procs to deal more damage. So this makes cleave a lot nicer to play than it's been in the past. Deadly Calm has also been changed it will reduce the rage of your next four abilities by 100%, and the passive is that it increases your maximum rage by 30. So it allows you to pull up a little more rage for those uh, Colossus Smash windows. And then the last tier, Dreadnought was changed. Overpower still has two charges when you take this talent, however, it will also deal a cone of damage in front of you, uh, similar to the Seismic Wave uh, Azerite trait, I believe it was called, in BFA. And then Ravager uh, has been changed to 45 second cooldown, and it now also follows the closest enemy whenever you cast it. Uh, it's not very fast, but if you, you know, if the tank moves the mobs a little bit, it will move with them. So that's just a nice quality of life change on Ravager. 
So as you can see, a bunch of small changes, but nothing that really changes our gameplay or play style on this spec. Now taking a look at the legendaries real quick, first up we have Misshapen Mirror. Spell Reflect lasts 200% longer and applies to your party. So this one has a bunch of uses in Mythic Plus, obviously in arenas. Uh, in raiding, they removed a bunch of the interactions with Spell Reflect, if I remember correctly, but it still has its spots. Then we have Segment of Tormented Kings. Activating Ravager, Recklessness, or Avatar randomly casts one of the other two abilities at reduced effectiveness. So this ring is particularly good when you go a Mythic Plus build, where you take Avatar and Ravager. Um, so basically every time you do a burst AoE, you're going to have double your cooldown abilities. So it makes your burst AoE just a lot stronger than it is without it. Um, then we have Enduring Blow. Mortal Strike has a 15% chance to apply the Colossus Smash effect to your target for 5 seconds. For single target, it might be pretty strong. The other legendaries, uh, Battle Lord, which causes your slam to have a 30% chance to reset your, your MS. Then we have Exploiter. Execute causes the target to take 25% more damage from your next MS, stacking up to two times. So these are nice on paper, but I don't think they're like impactful enough to be a legendary. So they should either be buffed or changed slightly. So even on paper, they seem nice, but none of these legendaries seem to address the big issue that Arms Warrior has, and that is Rage Generation. So I'm really sad to see that really none of these are helping out with the biggest downside, because that's typically the type of legendaries they add to the game. All right, next let's take a look at the Covenants. So for Kyrian, we have Spear of Bastion does the same thing as it does for Fury. Um, for AoE, Spear of Bastion is super strong. It's going to generate you a lot of rage, which is something that Arms Warrior does struggle with. Um, so it's very nice to have. It also does a lot of damage, especially when you play the Avatar Ravager and Signet build. You're going to have a ton of burst AoE as an Arms Warrior. The downside is that on single target, it does fall a little bit behind. It's still not the worst one on single target, uh, but it's not exactly strong compared to like Condemn. For Venthyr, we have Condemn, uh, which replaces our Execute. So Condemn is super strong on arms. And for single target and raiding, this is probably going to be the go-to Covenant. Just because Execute is such a huge part of the arms rotation, that being able to press it uh, when that boss is high health and when the boss is low health um, just makes it a lot more powerful. And also the fact that it ignores armor um, is just extremely strong. So for raiding in particular, Condemn is really good. On AoE, it loses out on a lot of value since you're only able to cleave it with sweeping strikes. Um, but I think that's something that most warriors are going to be able to live with since it does do so much damage. Then for Necrolord, we have Conqueror's Banner. Same as for Fury. I don't like the design of it just because it's an ability that buffs your group. And anything that buffs your group is not going to be um, balanced or tuned for the player. Instead, it's tuned for the group, so it's not going to be satisfying to play. I really dislike uh, this ability. Then for Night Fae, we have Ancient Aftershock, which in my opinion is just a weaker Spear of Bastion. It does generate more rage if you have a large number of targets. However, on single target um, or on lower number of targets, I think it's just strictly worse and it's also a longer cooldown. So Ancient Aftershock, it's okay, but I think it's just a little too similar to the Kyrian ability to be played. Next up for the Conduits, uh, we have Crash the Ramparts. Overpower has a 6% chance to apply Colossus Smash for 3 seconds. This along with the MS Legendary makes it so you have a lot higher uptime on Colossus Smash on single target. Then we have Merciless Bone Grinder. Slam Critical Strikes reduce the remaining cooldown of Ravager by 1 second. This one doesn't seem particularly useful since on single target you typically don't play Ravager um, and on AoE you don't really slam that much. So it's a little counterintuitive in my opinion. 
Then we have Mortal Combo. MS has a 12% chance to trigger a second MS. So this um, in particular is just decent with uh, the MS Legendary. Overall, the arms conduits seem okay, but they're nothing spectacular, which is something that I've been noticing for most of the specs. So don't feel too left out. Alright, so how does Arms Warrior actually play? So, like I mentioned previously in this video, Arms Warrior still plays the same as it did before. Our rage generation is very low, so early on in any expansion, Arms Warrior is going to feel a little bit slow to play. Um, however, the payoff windows of Colossus Smash are still there. My big issue with Arms Warrior is that they didn't address rage generation uh, pretty much at all. So with all the talent tweaks we got, the legendaries we got, um, conduits that we got, none of them really address raid generation. Um, and the best in slot or the favored covenant uh, through Ventir and the ability we get Condemn also doesn't help our raid generation. While Spear of Bastion would help out with that, it loses way too much value on single target to be considered. So I'm not exactly sure what their plan is with Arms Warrior. Uh, the AoE burst damage currently is really good, but outside of your burst, you're just doing really, really low damage, which could be good, could be bad, depends on how you look at it. On single target, it's still that slow-paced, hard-hitting spec that it was before, uh, which I'm not personally a fan of, however, some people might be. Um, so if you enjoyed that in the past, that's exactly how, how Arms Warrior is going to play in Shadowlands. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the arms warrior changes uh, to me it seems like they made too many changes that have almost no impact but that's just what i think anyway thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next one